everyone, this is Maki. In the Gundam Seed series, the three main characters are equally popular. And in the movie Seed Freedom, each of them showed new personalities to the audience. Especially Shin Naosuke, hasn't his popularity increased significantly? In Seed Destiny, Shin often showed anger, overwhelmed by the suddenness and injustice of the war. In Seed Freedom, however, he chooses to fight with his own will. This time, we will analyze Shin's performance in the final battle of Seed Freedom. Please be aware that we will be discussing a lot of spoilers from the final battle. Are you ready? Hit the subscribe button and activate the Hyperdeuterium engine. We now enter the battle zone. The Black Knight Squad Ruler is launched from the battleship. This is just my personal interpretation, but it looks like a toad doll before activation. It seems to represent being a toy of war, the Twisted Queen. The Destiny Gundam and the Black Knight pass each other at high speed. Shin immediately turns around, prepares his weapon and attacks. At first glance, this looks like a fighting style used in Sea Destiny. But let's take a closer look. Destiny Gundam is holding Arondite with only his right arm. And it's holding a railgun with its left arm. This fighting style was not used by Shin in the past. Does this two-handed fighting style remind you of anyone? Athran, perhaps? Athran often used two linked beam sabers. That's right. That's Kiro's fighting style. Using two beam rifles or two beam sabers at the same time is Kiro's technique. In addition, Shin has adopted this fighting style in his own way. He created a style where he uses a big sword and a rifle at the same time. Shortly after Shin turns the Destiny Gundam around, the members of the Black Knight Squad turn around as well. Shin's reaction speed to the enemy is superior. In fact, there might be a cut battle scene after this part in the released movie. Let's focus on the blue Black Knight Squad challenging the Destiny Gundam. It has already lost its beam rifle. It was equipped with a beam rifle during the start scene. Shin has already inflicted damage to the enemy's combat capabilities out of the view of the audience. Some fans say I can't believe that the Black Knight Squad is more powerful than Destiny Gundam. I have the same impression. However, in actual combat, there are scenes where the Destiny Gundam makes up for its performance disadvantage with the skill of its pilot. Let's watch the duel between the Blue Black Knight Squad and Destiny Gundam. Swords clash and light sparks. Shin slides his braid away from the enemy's sword once and then attacks again, knocking the enemy away. If Destiny Gundam were the more powerful mobile suit, it would have knocked the opponent away after the first crash. However, Shin makes up for the difference in power with his skill. He deflects the opponent's power and strikes when he is vulnerable, knocking him away. That's not all. He kicks the unbalanced opponent, a fighting style reminiscent of Sha Ozenobo or Kami Yubi down from the Universal Century series. He uses the rebound of the kick to spin around and face the Red Black Knight's sword. Shin understands that the enemy will try to surround and attack him. This is a lesson he has learned from his previous battles with Imodo Justice. In the fight against Eldora, Shin was defeated, but it wasn't a one-sided loss. He responded to and defended against the Black Knight Squad's clone attack. Mars and Hubbard, highly skilled pilots, couldn't handle the clone attack and were defeated. At the time of the Battle of Eldor, Shin had already been able to counter the Black Knight Squad's tactics. 
The Destiny Gundam approaches the Red Rock Knight's court and destroys its beam rifle. Shin prioritizes damaging the enemy's combat capabilities rather than rushing to defeat them. Stopping to deal a heavy blow would leave him vulnerable to concentrated attacks from the other three Rock Knight Squad units. That's why Shin targets the enemy's beam rifle. Have you seen this fighting style before? That's right, destroying the enemy's weapon is a technique that Kira uses frequently. This shows Shin's growth from fighting alongside Kira and learning his techniques. Hmm? <laughs> Did us run fight similarly? Well, it's certainly possible that Shin learned from watching us run fight. But what would Shin say if asked about this fighting style? Thanks to Captain Yamato's guidance, I've grown he would answer cheerfully with a bright smile. The Orange Black Knight squad approaches the Destiny Gundam from behind after destroying the beam rifle. In Zayda Gundam, Anna Owe gave Kamiyu the challenging advice to have eyes on your back and watch your opponent, which confused him. How does Shin handle it? He aims the railgun on his left arm at the enemy. The twisting motion of his body allows him to avoid the enemy's beam rifle. It's a move reminiscent of Amaro Way and Ways of Earl. He anticipates the enemy's attack avoids it and deducts the position of the enemy's beam rifle from the trajectory of the beam, destroying it. As soon as the Destiny Gundam fires the Railgun, the Green Rock Knight Squad approaches. Here, Shin makes another quick, complex decision. Instead of simply blocking the enemy's sword, he deflects it with an upward attack. The Black Knight Squad quickly regains its stance, but the Destiny Gundam recovers a bit faster. He immediately aims the railgun at the enemy and fires. His target is the enemy's sword again. He calmly and steadily disables the enemy's combat abilities. Shin then activates his seed ability. Did you notice Shin hasn't fought at full strength yet? Shin's seed ability is red. It's the same color as his eyes. There is also a mixture of yellow light. Is this just a visual effect to enhance the colors? Or is it an artistic representation of Stella and Ray's ghost fighting alongside Shen? The Destiny Gundam activates its wings of light and wields Arndite with both arms. At this point, Shen discards the first railgun. The railgun used in the final battle is a prototype and doesn't have a bullet loading function. As soon as the barrel is damaged by firing, it is discarded. Although he discards the first railgun, he still has another railgun on his hip. It may seem like Shin is exploding with emotion, but he is calmly securing his combat options. The Blue Black Knight Squad defends against Tarandite. Arndite is powerful enough to cut destroy Gunnam in half. This scene shows the incredible durability of the Black Knight's Quartz shield. After the first clash, Shin immediately readies his sword. At that moment, the enemy's torso is not protected by the shield. However, the Destiny Gunnam continues to face the shield. He decided that an attack aimed at the torso would not come in time. It calmly analyzes the performance of the Black Knight Squad and the skill of its pilot. When Shin makes his next attack, the Black Knight Squad uses its shield to defend itself. Although they are portrayed as weaker pilots compared to the main characters, they are able to accurately defend against Shin's attacks. These pilots are indeed highly skilled. The second attack is blocked as well. However, Shin quickly turns the Destiny Gundam sideways and continues to attack with his sword. 
He uses the powerful propulsion of the light wings for the spin. The light wing drive, an advanced version of the Voltier Lumiere technology, is extremely powerful. In Sea Destiny, it collided with Infinite Justice, causing him to fall to the lunar surface. The Black Knight Squad rocks the spin attack again. Shin performs another spin attack. By destroying the weapons of the other members of the Black Knight Squad, he has gained time to perform the spin attack. The third attack finally destroys the shield. By the way, a small digression, but the blue Black Knight squad fighting in this scene is holding a beam rifle. In the previous scene, they did not have a beam rifle. Could this be a production mistake? It might be worth checking the changes in the Blu-ray disc version. The Red Black Knight squad approaches the Destiny Gunnam from behind. It might have thought it was an opportunity since Shen showed the big opening. At that moment, the Black Knight squad attacks with a sword. If it had used the beam rifle, it might have been able to attack faster. But as we saw earlier, Shin had already destroyed the Red Black Knight squad's beam rifle. Shin knows exactly which weapons the enemy has lost. If you can predict the enemy's actions, it is easy to deal with them. Just as Anna Ray advised, Shin has eyes on his back. Shin gently moves the Destiny Gunnam backward, avoiding the enemy's attack. He fights not only with intense movements, but also by combining them with smooth actions. While executing an attack, Shin also controls the output of the light wings. On the other hand, what about you, who controls the Red Black Knight's cord? He uses the beam mantle until he is about to attack the Destiny Gunnam. However, he turns off the beam mantle when he attacks the Destiny Gunnam. He has high piloting skills but only performs one action at a time. If he hadn't let his guard down and continued to control the beam mantle, Liu's lifespan might have been extended a bit longer. Seeing that the beam cloak is not in use, she names the Palm Ray Cannon. The face of the Destiny Gunnam is facing the torso of the Black Knight Squad. Shin seems to have decided that he has an opportunity to destroy the Black Knight Squad. Liu panics and says I can't read Shin's mind. The Accord operates by reading minds. They rely on the Accord's ability rather than predicting the future and acting on their own will. Even so, Liu tries to use the Beam Mantle to defend himself. The face of Destiny Gunnam is now facing the arm. Shin has changed his target to the arm. As a result, the arm of the Red Black Knight Squad is damaged. Losing the ability to fight by destroying the arm is reminiscent of Shin's battle with Athran in Sea Destiny. For Shin, it may be a humiliating memory, but it may also have been a learning experience that helped him grow as a pilot. In the middle of the battle, the Impulse Gundam runs out of power. As the color of the variable face shift armor changes to gray, Luna Maria fires a flare. While dodging the Black Knight's cross attacks, Shin spots the red flare. As she fires the flare, Luna Maria calls out Shin's name. However, radio communication is impossible in the battle zone, where a neutron jammer is being used. So Luna Maria's voice doesn't reach him. But Shin understands the situation from the prayer. Shin approaches the Impulse Gunnam while avoiding enemy attacks. Since he destroyed the Black Knight Squad's beam rifle, the enemy's attacks are minimal and easily dodged by Shin. Using the Love Love Deuterium Beam, Destiny Gunnam completes the power supply to Impulse Gunnam and immediately takes evasive action. At that moment, 
Destiny Gundam's face is turned toward the enemy. The protagonist of G Gundam, Domen Kashi, once shouted those who interfere with a person's love should be kicked by a horse and sent to hell. Will the Black Knight squad be sent to hell by the attack of a horse? There are no horse-shaped mobile suits on this battlefield. The dog like Baku is suppressing the soft rebels in the front and is not here. Or is that really the case? Haven't you forgotten about the reliable full record ally? That's right! Gaia Gunnam. Stella, the pirate of Gaia Gunnam, is protecting Chen. Just as you saw, Stella's ghost is protecting Chen. It doesn't transform into a horse, but into a devilish form. But let's not worry about the details. The minds of a code were sent to hell. Let's take a look at the battle just before Stella attacks the Akko's minds. Shen is dodging the Black Knight Squad's attacks. By reducing the enemy's means of attack, he makes it easier to avoid their brawls. He dodges the enemy's beams with minimal movement while counter-attacking with the Wailgun. Shin gradually gets used to the Black Knight Squad's movements. In the next scene, he executes an amazing strategy. The Red Black Knight Squad tries to ram the Destiny Gunnam. Destiny Gunnam avoids the ramming attack of the Red Black Knight Squad, and then the Blue Black Knight Squad tries to attack with a sword. Shin dodges this attack as well. He then hides behind the growing clone of his Blue Black Knight Scout and aims his large beam cannon. While the Red Black Knight Squad faces the Destiny Gunnam, the Blue Black Knight Squad Chrome hides the Destiny Gunnam from view. Shin uses the enemy's abilities to enhance his own attack. The Red Black Knight Squad counterattacks with a beam rifle. Since it has lost its right arm, it wields the beam rifle with its left arm. Oh, now that you mention it, the Red Black Knight Squad's beam rifle was destroyed by the Destiny Gunnam's attack. Is this a production error? Or did it receive surprise from a battleship? In Sea Destiny, there is a scene where a soft warship fires beam rifles at mobile suits. The Foundation Kingdom could be using a similar system. The Destiny Gundam fires the large beam cannon in the direction of the approaching Red Black Knight Squad. It prepares and executes the attack while hidden behind the clone of the Blue Black Knight Squad. He also fires the railgun with his white arm while firing the beam cannon. This seems to be an adaptation of a tactic used by Kior. It's a strategy that Shin developed as Kiro's subordinate. While swinging the large beam cannon like a beam saber, Shin dodges enemy attacks. Again, he performs multiple actions in a single move. The Orange Black Knight Squad narrowly avoids the Destiny Gundam's railgun fire. The pilot, Leader Erdogan, acts childishly, but his skills as a pilot are quite high. The Destiny Gundam is surrounded by the Black Knight Squad. At first glance, this seems like a dangerous situation. However, Destiny Gundam still has powerful abilities hidden. The Accord initiates a synchro attack according to the novel. This attack fuses the minds of the four codes, allowing them to act as one. At the same time, Griffin launches a mind attack on Shin. Stella's earlier attack causes the Akos to experience fear. As the terrified Akos begin their attack, you can see a red laser aimed at Destiny Gunnam. This is the same laser that was used to command the Unman drones earlier in the story. The Akos may have realized that they cannot defeat Destiny Gunnam with their own power alone. In the next scene, something surprising happens. It seems that the Black Knight Squad's attacks hit Destiny Gunnam three times in a row. 
The mobile suits are drawing very small, so it's hard to see what's happening. Shin may be dodging the attacks with minimal movement. At this point, Destiny Gundam's joints will emit a dull red glow. This phenomenon occurs when Destiny Gundam is performing at its maximum capacity. It continues to evade the Black Knight Squirrel's attacks. Then something even more amazing happens after being hit by a beam rifle. Destiny Gundam disintegrates into particles of light. This may remind some of Double or Razor's Quantianon. So, does Destiny Gundam have a similar ability to Double or Razor? At this point, the detailed specifications of Destiny Gundam spec to have not been released. Let's look at what we know from Sea Destiny. The wings of Destiny Gundam are equipped with technology that uses Mirage colloid particles. The phenomenon of cloning is due to the effects of Mirage colloid particles. Mirage colloid particles are also used in Mirage colloid stealth. Perhaps when the clones are created, the Mirage Colloid Stealth is activated at the same time, hiding the main body of the Destiny Gundam from the enemy. Shin attacks the enemy with Aran died. Just like before, Destiny Gundam disintegrates into particles of light after being hit by the enemy's attack. It then reappears in the opposite direction from where it disappeared. It can be interpreted that it created a clone in the lower left and moved to the upper right using Mirage Colloid Stealth. The Destiny Gundam that appeared in the upper right is hit again by a beam rifle, but it disappears again in pink light. It will reappear at the front of the screen. Similarly, after blocking the enemy's sword, the Destiny Gundam turns into light and disappears. Finally, it reappears prominently in front of the screen. This is the attack, where Destiny Gundam creates multiple clones, which has fascinated many fans. According to the novel, this phenomenon is achieved by a substance called two particles. However, there was no detailed explanation of what two particles are. The golden and pink particles are similar to the phenomenon seen in Mighty Strike Freedom Gunnan. It is mentioned that the particles of Mighty Strike Freedom can react to thoughts. The particles of Destiny Gunnan may also have the ability to be controlled by thoughts. The clones created will replicate the movements of the original Destiny Gunnan with a slide array. At that time, the clones also emit the sound of engines. Perhaps it affects the minds of the enemy pilots, causing them to perceive the sound. Furthermore, the clones of the Destiny Gunnam appear like afterimages. In the initial attack, the clones move in a very straightforward manner. They charge at the Black Knight's court in a straight line. Let's focus on the next scene. The moment the clone grows golden, it changes its trajectory. It could be controlled by thought, like the Drought Gun system. The golden Destiny Gunnam approaches the Black Knight Squad. Among the golden particles, pink particles seem to be enveloped right after the view is covered with pink particles. The Gelguk menace piloted by Hilda appears. Earlier, Shin was hiding behind the Black Knight Squad Chrome to aim the beam cannon. It appears that he quickly adopted this tactic by combining it with the functions of the Destiny Gunnam and put it into his own version. This battle was Shin's first time in combat with the Destiny Gunnam spec, too. He probably didn't have enough time to train. In those circumstances, he learned from fighting the enemy and instantly created his own tactics. The pilots of the Black Knight squad were highly skilled. Their strong skills pushed Shin to grow even more. Using the Jetstream attack with the clones of Destiny Gunnam, he 
Kyoto destroys readers Rock Knight's cord. Surprisingly, the original Gundam's jet stream attack never showed the mobile suit being destroyed. At least in the battles shown in the anime, no mobile suit was destroyed by it. Their only success was crashing into a transport crane that had rammed into them to disrupt the jet stream attack killing Matildo, who was in command of the transport crane. Hildo Harkon is a character based on Matilda from the original Gunnam. This is the first time that the jet stream attack has killed an ace pilot. Historically, it's an interesting scene. Lidard is defeated. The Gelguk menace raises his shield to protect himself from the blast. At this moment, the defeat of the Black Knight squad is certain. Through the synchro attack, they have shared consciousness and experienced the fear and pain of being burned that Leader felt. This causes them to freeze. Shin doesn't miss the opening. He charges forward, wielding the great sword and died. At this point, no beam is emitted from the tip of the braid. The Arondite is designed to be covered in a beam at maximum power. But Shin doesn't use its full power. By striking the Black Knight's quad several times, he may have measured the strengths of their armor. Despite his intense expression, Shin's mind remains calm. The Destiny Gundam strikes the Red Black Knight's quad with its sword. After the sword strikes, the clones pass through. When Leader Earth was defeated, the clones confused the enemy first, allowing the Gelguk menace to land its attack. When Ayu was defeated, it was the other way around. The clones caused confusion, but the main body attacked first. By never repeating the same actions, Shin makes it impossible for his enemies to predict his actions. Next. Three Destiny Gundam units created clones and attacked with Beam Boonsangs. The Beam Boonsangs separated from the clones fly without disappearing. Is Shin projecting the Boonsangs he sees through mental resonance? It's hard to believe that the cloning device is built into the Boonsangs. The Beam Boomerang hits the Green Rock Knight's cord. However, this boomerang is an illusion projected by the clone. It passes through the body of the Black Knight's court, emitting light as it goes. Could it be responding to the Fentech armor? Two beam boonsangs approach the Black Knight's court. Griffin seems to be dodging the one on the right. But it turns out the left one was real. While he dodges the right one, the left one damages his torso. Destiny Gundam throws two beam boonsangs. Another beam boomerang hits the already damaged Black Knight's cord, destroying its head. Griffin loses his sight. Still, Shin does not let his guard down. He destroys the beam rifle that fell from the Black Knight's cord's hand with a beam boomerang. It was noted in Sea Destiny that Beam Boonsangs are controlled by a simplified rock gun system. Perhaps advances in technology have allowed for more precise control. The precision required to destroy a small beam rifle with a beam boomerang is an amazing skill. The Destiny Gundam approaches the Black Knight squad, which has lost its head and weapon. It shoots the large beam cannon into the damaged torso. This destroys the body that was hit by the beam boomerang. Some may remember the scene where Kyo fought Duro Gunnam with Stry Gunnam. The face shift armor provides extremely high defense against non beam weapons. Kyo was able to inflict considerable damage by aiming a knife at the damaged part of the Duro Gunnam. Shin was told by Kira, I entrust you with the battleship Millennium. He fights following Kira's orders and using the skills he learned from Kira. After damaging the Fentech armor, 
which has high defensive capabilities against beam weapons. They fire their beam cannon. By the way, did you notice? In the scene, where Destiny Gundam attacks the Black Knight's court with the large beam cannon, the beam boomerang is attached to its shoulder. Is that a production mistake? Let's go back and check. The beam boomerang, the destroyed the beam rifle, and the Destiny Gundam appear on the screen almost simultaneously. What do you think? Finally, I'd like to share my hypothesis on this point. Destiny Gundam moves to defeat the last Rock Knight squad. It holds on died in its left arm. It's a small detail, but an important one. I'll come back to it later. As the wings of light shine, pink light appears. At the same time as the clones, the Destiny Gundam attacks the Blue Rock Knight Squad. The Pamathio Kina Beam Cannon mounted on its Pompiri is the Rock Knight Squad. The Fentec Armored Rock Knight Squad is destroyed. A very large beam is generated, unlike a beam rifle. The Pamathio Kina mounted on the Destiny Gundam may be able to use the energy from the engine directory. Pink particles are also emitted. The pink particles of Mighty Strike Freedom were used as a barrier to defend against enemy attacks. In the case of Destiny Gundam, it may use them for offense. Now, all of the Black Knight squads have been defeated. Let's focus on the next scene. Did you know this? The green Black Knight squad on the left is destroyed by the Big Beam Cannon. The Red Rock Knight Squad in the middle is defeated by Iron Knight. The Blue Rock Knight Squad on the right is killed by Pomophil Kinal. The surprise is the explosion in the upper left. Hilda's Gelguk Menace is nearby. This means that the explosion is probably from Leader's Rock Knight Squad. Furthermore, the explosion from Leader's Rock Knight Squad grows just before the Destiny Gundam flies to the front of the screen. In other words, this scene reveals that the Rock Knight Squads were not defeated sequentially, but simultaneously. Let's watch the scene where the left Destiny Gundam returns. It had been wielding a large beam cannon, but now it's holding on tight. The middle and right Destiny Gundams return to the center of the screen, still carrying on died. It's unclear how complex the movements of the clones can be. I think the left Destiny Gundam is the original, while the other two are clones. After the golden particles shine, the Destiny Gundam merges back into one. It assumes the same pose as in the promotional images. What do you think? Do you think Destiny Gundam uses clones projected into space? Or do you think it actually splits into several tangible units? Let me share my hypothesis that I briefly mentioned earlier. Destiny Gundam's beam boosons are controlled by the drop gun system. What if we assume that other weapons are also controlled by the drop gun system? Earlier, we saw a scene where the Destiny Gundam attacking with the large beam cannon had the beam boomerang attached to its shoulder. If the beam boomerang is not an illusion, but a real physical object, this scene would be strange. But what if the beam boomerang on Destiny Gundam's shoulder is an illusion? What if not only the beam boomerang, but also the iron dart on its back? and its white armor illusions. The Red Rock Knight Squad was defeated by Iron Dite. It seemed that the Destiny Gundam equipped with Iron Dite destroyed it. But what if it was actually Iron Dite that was controlled by the Drop Goon system and the illusionary Destiny Gundam seemed to be wielding it? The same goes for the scene where the Blue Rock Knight Squad was defeated. What if only the white palm was the tangible part of the Destiny Gundam, while the rest was an illusion?
The Destiny Gundam with the large beam cannon moved only its left arm. Could it be that the white arm was detached? Some might remember the Tarnex of the Tarnay Gundam. But there is an even closer example. Impulse Gundam in its battle against Freedom Gundam, Impulse Gundam used its combination and separation mechanisms to win. Could Destiny Gundam Spec 2 have a function that allows parts and weapons to be separated and used separately? If we think that way, it would be possible to defeat the three Black Knight squads almost simultaneously with different weapons. Of course, this is just my personal interpretation and hypothesis. Do you remember Elika Simmons' words when she handed over Destiny Gundam and strike freedom to Shin and the others? If you want to fight the Black Knight, their power may not be enough, she said. If we were to take her words literally, Destiny Gundam Spec 2 would be an outdated mobile suit with insufficient power. But let's focus on Nelika's expression. She has a smile like a child who has played a prank. Was the Destiny Gundam really an outdated mobile suit with insufficient performance? Even though she said the performance might be insufficient, she might have foreseen this outcome from the beginning. Elika may indeed be the witch from Earth. Thank you for watching to the end. See you next time.